guys, welcome back to Arsenal 23. My name's Seth. So we're out on the range today and we're gonna to be testing 7.62 by 39 and 5.56 by 45. Now the guns that we're gonna be using today is a Century Arms BFT 47. And then for our 5.56 gun, we're gonna be using a PSA PA15 AR15. Now I know that I said we're gonna be testing 5.56 ammunition today, but 5.56 by 45 is most of the time always going to be a full metal jacket cartridge. 223 Remington, on the other hand, is commonly used for hunting and commonly has expanding projectiles, which is the kind of projectiles we're going to be testing today. Speaking of that, the ammunition for the 7.62x39 that we're going to be using is Winchester for both brands. So for our first one, we're going to be using Winchester Super X with a 123 grain soft point projectile. They call it a power point. For the second type of ammunition, we're going to be using Deer Season XP from Winchester as well, but this has got the extreme point on it, kind of like a ballistic tip. For our 5.56, or 223 in this case, our first type of ammunition is going to be the Fiocchi Field Dynamics 40 grain VMAX projectiles, and then we've got Winchester Silver Tip 64 grain defense tip projectiles. These are also kind of like a ballistic tip. But before we get to any testing, let's learn a little bit more about the 7.62x39 and the 223 Remington, and then we'll go ahead and put these rounds through some tests. So we'll start with the older of the two, the 7.62x39. Towards the end of World War II in Soviet Russia, the Technical Council of the People's Commissariat for Armaments met to discuss the development and introduction of a new intermediate rifle cartridge. The Council determined that this new cartridge was to be utilized in a variety of infantry weapons, including a simple carbine, a select fire rifle, and even light machine guns. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see why this would be extremely efficient, so the Council moved forward with assigning the development of this new cartridge to Nikolai Elizarov as chief designer. Elizarov and his team of assistants and collaborators created the first variant of the cartridge in 1943 with the 7.62x41. This cartridge was similar to what we now know to be 7.62x39, but had a bit stubbier appearance due to the case being a bit longer and having a differently shaped bullet. Although the 7.62x41 was officially adopted and had a pilot production run beginning in 1944, advancements in testing revealed that a different bullet design could improve accuracy and penetration capabilities of the new cartridge. Test results show that adding what's referred to as a boat tail, a small taper on the rear of the bullet, the new cartridge gained measurable accuracy at both short and long ranges. To keep the same overall mass of the projectile, the nose was lengthened, and to retain the overall length of the cartridge, the case neck was shortened. This new cartridge will be designated the 7.62x39, and rapidly proliferated throughout the entire globe after the introduction of the SKS and AK-47 rifles. The success of this revolutionary intermediate cartridge soon caught the attention of the United States military. The U.S. Continental Army Command determined that the U.S. military required a small caliber, high velocity cartridge to be used in a new lightweight combat rifle. A team of corporations and weapons manufacturers were assembled in 1953, including Remington Arms, Fairchild Industries, which was an aircraft manufacturing company, oddly enough, and notably Eugene Stoner. Stoner was essential in the development of the cartridge, and with the help of Frank Snow, designed the 222 Special, which would go on to be renamed the 223 Remington to distinguish it from the several other 22 caliber cartridges being designed. Stoner scaled down his AR-10 design to fit the smaller 223 cartridge and designated it the Armalite 15, short to just AR-15. The AR-15 and his new intermediate cartridge, the 223 Remington, were gone to be officially adopted in 1963, being designated the M16 rifle and the M193 556 ball round. These two cartridges, the 7.62x39 and the 223 Remington, revolutionized the battlefield of modern conflicts. But which caliber is objectively superior? Hopefully, we can shed some light on that. All right, so now that we know a little bit more about both cartridges, let's go ahead and put some shots through the chronograph and see what kind of numbers we get. So first up, we're gonna be testing the 7.62x39, starting with the Winchester Super X 123 grain jacketed soft points. Twenty four zero two. Twenty two seventy eight. And twenty two seventy six. Next up, we're going to be testing the Winchester Deer Season XP with its extreme point projectile. This is kind of like a ballistic tip. It's another one hundred and twenty three grain projectile, so I'm not thinking there's going to be too significant of a velocity difference. Let's find out. 2356. 2364. 
1998. So because that last reading on the chronograph was so low, we loaded up one more round of that Deer Season XP, and we're going to put another shot through the chronograph so we can get a fair average for these cartridges. Seems like we got 23.96. So for our 223, the first cartridge is going to be the 64 grain Winchester Silver Tips. Twenty-seven, sixty-seven, twenty-seven, eighty-three, and twenty-eight, eleven. So our last cartridge that we're going to test today is the Fioki Field Dynamics forty grain V Max projectiles. Thirty-seven ninety-six. Thirty-eight eighty-six. And thirty-eight seventy-six. Let's crunch the numbers. So we've already crunched the numbers, but before we discuss the results, chronographs don't always agree with each other. Different environmental factors such as the sunshine, the wind, and the cloud cover can affect chronograph results. So keeping that in mind, with our 7.62 Winchester Super X, we get an average velocity of 2,318 feet per second. Now comparing that to the Deer Season XP's 2,372 feet per second, it's not that big of a difference. It's only 54 feet per second. Moving to the 223's, we see much higher energy numbers, with the Winchester Silver Tip getting an average velocity of 2,787 feet per second. With our 40 grain VMAX projectiles, we see an average velocity of 3,852 feet per second. That's a difference of 1,065 feet per second. That's significant. But remember, we're using much lighter projectiles than the 223. How does that compare energy foot pound wise to the 762? Well, with our Winchester Super X, we get an energy foot pound of 1467, comparing that to the Deer Season XP's 1537 foot pounds. That's only a difference of 70 foot pounds of energy. But moving to the 223s, we see much lower numbers with the silver tips getting 1,104 foot-pounds of energy and the 40 grain VMAX projectiles getting 1,318. So I think it's definitive that the 7.62 is going to be more powerful than the 223 in most chamberings. But you can narrow that gap depending on ammo selection. But remember, these are just numbers in a chart. How does this translate into effectiveness? Let's see if we can put these rounds to some other tests and shed some light on that. So up first is our favorite target, water jugs. Now this isn't a very comprehensive test, but it should give us a good demonstration of the power of these cartridges. Up first is going to be the 7.62. I'm going to shoot the targets on your right with the Winchester Super X and then the targets on your left with the Winchester Deer Season XP. Hopefully we should be able to see a difference. Remember the Super X is a soft point and the XP is a ballistic tip. See, the 7.62 just destroyed these water jugs. I mean, Jeremy, if you want to get a slow pan of where all the carcasses are, I mean, it blasted them up to 20 feet away. Let's see how the 223 compares. So up next is the 223. The target on the right, I'm going to shoot with the Winchester Silver Tips, and the target on the left, I'm going to shoot with those 40 grain VMAX projectiles. Weapons clear. So with our 223, as I'm sure you can probably see in the slow mo, even though it still launched these jugs pretty well, looks like I went in there, even though it launched these jugs pretty well, still didn't obliterate the water jugs like we saw with the 762. Let's put these rounds to a different test. So we saw how these two rounds performed in water jugs, but how did they perform in a penetration test? Well, for this, we've got 10 pine wood boards followed by a water jug. And on these two tests, I'm just going to be shooting full metal jacket ammunition for 7.62 and for 2.23. So up first, 7.62. Oh, 
All right, so we got a good centered hit. We made it through one, two, three, four, five. You can see it's starting to keyhole there. That means the bullet is spinning as it's going through. So that'd be six. You can see we're really slowing down it. Cracked this seventh one right here. Eight, nine, still keyholing. And we deflected off of the tenth. Luckily, we spared this last water jug. Let's see how 223 stacks up. Next up, I've got a 55 grain 223. Let's see how this compares. So we shifted a little bit to the right here, but we made it through one, two, three. You can see the holes are still getting a little bit bigger. That means it's keyholing, tumbling through the wood. Five, six, we're on the very edge of the sixth one. And yep, on the seventh, we caught a little bit of the jacket, but it looks like it deflected most of the way out. Let's dig this out and see how much is left. Oh, nope, that's actually the whole projectile. Pretty warm there. That is just mangled. So the 762 stayed straight all the way through the 10th board, whereas the 556, it stopped in the 7th board. Now, is that a significant difference, or is that just chance? We'll let you be the judge. So we put these rounds through some water jugs, and then we put them through our penetration test. But these are just boards on a table, and those are just jugs of water. How do these rounds perform in ballistic gel? Well, let's get the blocks out here and figure that out. So we've got our ballistic gel block set up. We've got four layers of denim on the front of the block and a water jug behind it. I don't know if anything's gonna go all the way through the block, but the water jug's there to catch anything if it does. So first up is gonna be the Fiocchi 40 grain VMAX projectile. All right, so now our denim's reset. Now let's hit it with that 64 grain Winchester silver tip. So the gun's clear. Oddly enough, it looks like that VMAX just kind of stopped in the first five or six inches. It really blasted out this side over here, but uh, you can see what's left of that slug right there around the six inch mark. Now the Winchester silver tip, it progressed up to about halfway through just over half of this 20 inch block here. So it's doing pretty well. And the wound channel on this thing is massive. It's probably three and a half to four and a half inches. But how do these stack up against 7.62? Well, well, let's turn the block around, set our denim back up, and try those out. So now we've got our 7.62s loaded up. First up, I'm going to shoot the Winchester Super X 123 grain soft point. So we've got our denim reset. Now let's hit it with that Deer Season XP from Winchester. Let's go take a look. Good God. All right, weapons clear. I feel like there's a pretty clear distinction in uh, which cartridge has more effectiveness. That's uh, This is the 7.62 side. Um, as you can see, it's uh, in chunks. So the 7.62 looks like it made it a little bit farther than the 5.56 or the 2.23 in this situation. Uh, let's dig these projectiles out of here. So for our 5.56 round, this one will be the 62 grain silver tip. Gosh, it's just so mangled in there. There we go. As you can see, that one is just mangled. With our other 5.56, five, all that's left, I believe, is just going to be a copper base. It's that little nugget right there. Yep. 
Yep. And that's all it is. That's all that's left of it. With our 7.62s, this would be the Super X. Oh gosh, that one just flattened out. Unfortunately, we lost the Deer Season XP, but it flew out at about the same point as the Super X, so I feel like they would be pretty comparable. But what isn't comparable is this damage. I mean, how do you even compare this end to this end? Obviously, this end's still intact, and this end is just not. So, definitively, I think we can say the 7.62 is going to be more powerful and more effective than 5.56 regardless of how close you can get it. Now in choosing one of these two cartridges, you basically have to decide whether you want an AK platform or an AR platform. Now we are not discussing all the pros and cons of either platform today. We're just comparing the cartridges. But let me know in the comments if you would like to see a future video based on the AK versus the AR platforms and not just solely the ammunition. So if you enjoyed today's presentation, let us know down in the comments below. Give us a like and subscribe if you like us that much. It really does help push our channel and grow our community. And be sure to let us know in the comments what kind of calibers you would like to see tested in the future. We are always trying to expand our list of uh, comparisons here as our Versus series is the most popular. But let us know if you have any other video ideas as well. We'd be more than happy to try to help. But with that, that's all we have for you today. Till next time. And the 7.62 just... I mean, there's no comparing it. Here, like, feel this. Feel the grain structure. All right, okay, okay.